Cause I alone were in a hunter's dream. Cause the moment of truth was here and now. I felt his touch. I felt his guiding hand. The buck was mine forevermore. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley and director from deep in the bowels of our underground lair where we have packed full every vault. Now this bank ain't going under. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Good. Glad to hear that. Um, not even in a totally horrible foul mood today, which is rare. That is. That is I mean, a the, little rare. The king of pessimism, you'd think I'd be really, really grumpy. but Well. You know, mm-hmm. once in a while I, I have a half-decent day, despite the horse manure <laughs> weather. By the way, yeah. funny last Saturday, sitting around watching the twins down in spring training and yeah. looking outside going... Yes. Were they really going to start uh, in two weeks? Mm. Hmm. Just don't see that. No. It's like they. It's like they needed to keep the dome for for like April games or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe U.S. Uh, stadium they could. Yeah, I don't put know. The first few weeks there, I don't know. But we knew this was a possibility when they built is, an open air stadium. This is I, a normal bit of sort of well, not normal, but yeah, you know, it's, it happens. You know, March can be hit or miss. Mm-hmm. It can be. I have not. Here's the thing: I have not smelled spring in the air yet. Let's put it that way. Okay, I've seen some cardinals. I've heard tale of robins. I haven't seen any person. No, they were in. But, they're in St. Louis. You didn't hear yeah. the cardinals. They're okay. in St. Louis. All right. Uh, anyway, so the song. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that song. Hmm. I know I have, and I'm going to say it is uh, Garfunkel and Simon. <laughs> Garfunkel and Simon. No, it's not no. them. Okay, no. hang on. It's uh, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. No. Okay, I don't know. I have no idea. It's Fred Bear from Ted, Ted Nugent. Nugent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, kind of. When you said the title of it, yeah. that's when it kind of sprung in my head. Yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, you never guessed last week's song, so just for our, our listening really? well, public, well, sing it again. Uh, well, okay. Sing it again. You you want me to beat tell it? You? Beat it! Oh, was that? <laughs> beat it! Beat it! Beat it! How did I oh, not my. guess? You didn't catch that till this no. week. No. Well, when I edited the podcast, oh. I'm like, hey, <laughs> you never guessed the song, so I put it in the show notes, and it is up on the Spotify playlist. Uh, music from the podcast. Uh, you know. Uh, However, yeah, you you didn't guess it. So, I mean, I can just say it or I could read part of it just back say, to you. Just say it. It I was uh, Dirty, Rotten, filthy, filthy, Stinking Rich from Warrant. Really? Yes. So, oh, Warrant would have been my first guess, too. Probably. You know, yes. Jay, I got to thinking the other day. Uh, you know what's weird? Here's what's weird. Then this is this is very scary. And one thing I got to do is start signing out of social media. By the way. My Twitter and my Yahoo, I can't get into right now. Okay. So I can't read any hate tweets. Okay. What's going on? I don't know. Somehow I got kicked on my laptop. I got kicked out of everything. Oh, boy. And then my phone kicked me out of everything. Yeah. I don't know how. Wow. You got the twofer. That's no good. I don't know. But I cannot. I figured out how to get back into Facebook. Oh, that's good. Twitter and my email, I cannot get into. Um, I'm going to have to call Yahoo, I guess, because they, they're like, okay, we'll email you a code. I'm like, well, you can't email me a mail because like, you won't let me sign into Yahoo. <laughs> and Twitter, they won't verify anything unless they won't do it by my phone number for some reason. I don't, okay. know, what, I don't know what Elon Musk is doing over there. But he, anyway, um, but it, gets, it got me this to thinking because when you, when you Google something and you're signed into Facebook, then all of a sudden you get to Facebook and Google will shoot you ads on what you just Googled. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had that happen? Oh, yeah. In, in fact, even scarier than that, I've had conversations over the phone, like physical conversations, not typing, not texting, like conversations, and see things pop up in my ads that I just happen to be talking about. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Who's listening there? You're talking about porn? To somebody, and all no, of a sudden, oh, it okay, wasn't that okay? No, <laughs> I'm sure it was the the latest uh, burger and fries place, but whatever. Well, um, only, it's a lot closer to the truth. Yeah. Okay, okay. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know what I saw? 
And one of the ads that really got me nostalgic. Yeah. Wasn't one of the ads. I don't know what it was. There was a guy sitting there playing Mike Tyson's Punch Out from the 80s. Remember okay. that Nintendo game? I love that game. I, I, such Glass a great Joe game. Joe would always beat him. And then, yeah, then yeah. there was Don Flamingo. And yep. there was Sitting Bull. And right. there was uh, Piston Honda. Yeah. Anyway, I got to thinking nostalgically on video games. Because I, I didn't play them a lot as a kid. Um, yeah. But do you have a... What is your favorite... Like video games from way back in the day. I mean, Ooh. I know I don't know what the kids play now. Witches of Warcraft or some. I don't know what they play. Doesn't matter. Whatever it is, Witches it's dumb. Warcraft. It's nothing yeah. as great as it was. <laughs> but, well, what do they play? Mor- mortality combat. Yeah. What is it called? Yeah, Mortal Combat. Mortal Com- I don't know what it yeah. is. That well, that was popular when we were in high school. Still, that's oh, I that's goes not that a new one. Back? Oh, Mortal oh. Kombat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I played that when I was in high school. All right, Mortal Com- really? Kombat, okay, Street Fighter. That was all like, you know, kind of first generation. Not may- maybe not first generation Nintendo. It was like maybe the uh, what came after the first Nintendo. Was it like Nintendo, Nintendo two sixty four? No, was that later? I don't remember. Wasn't there a Nintendo two or a DS or something? That was like even that? later. Yeah. That was like my kids, uh, oh, my they, okay. oldest kids when they were young. Had the DS. Um, well, we're on what PlayStation Seventeen now or something, something like know. that. I don't know. I, I had Sega a Genesis. Sega Genesis. I yeah. That. <laughs> well, here's the other thing. Like, if you go way, way back. Yeah. Okay. Like, if if it if it's like the first Nintendos that came out that had Duck Hunt mm-hmm. and had Hogan's Alley, where I always oh, yeah. used to shoot the professor. Yep. And Super Mario Brothers. I mean, what? And and I had an Atari twenty six hundred. I mean, I did too. Yeah, yeah. Because there's two games on there that I'll play. Uh, I still have an old Atari yeah, with yeah, with okay. games. Yeah, Miss Pac Man and Donkey Kong, which I could play yeah. till I was and and the uh, uh-huh. Defender. Yeah, I mean, uh, incredible. But what yeah. what if you had to pick a, like a top three or top five? I mean, from your early years to like your high school years, I mean, mm. what what sticks out games wise? You know, I. <sighs> I think it's a little demystified now because um, I actually have the game on DVD, uh, it, which is weird. But uh, Dragon's Lair, do you remember that? That was the first of its kind where it yeah. was like a cartoon. Right. Oh, I loved it. I was terrible at it. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but yeah, I loved it. You know, you wait for the thing to blink and you go in that direction. If you don't do it, then, you know, the skeletons jump on you or the, you know, you go down the rapids the wrong way and you die. Interesting game to... Yeah. I I, I loved just because, yeah, it was the first cartoon. Everything else was, you know, all pixelated and blocky and yeah. Well, yeah, the bits were only Mm -hmm. eight bits or something back, back then or something like that. But I argue that that's what made it so good. Was no. that was that the simplicity of it? I mean, there's some of that. Uh, Pitfall was great. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, yeah. I I could you think of some while I'm talking? Yeah. Um, there was a racing game called RC Pro Am. Oh yeah, that I used to love, love, love. Even though I spun out, crashed mm. all the time. Um, I'm so bad at driving games. Yeah, I mean <laughs> they were really cool, but they were um, they were and there was this biking game. That yeah. was a little later. I used to fall off a cliff all the time at the same place. Um, there was, uh, I was a big, I've always been a big sports gaming guy. And there was yeah. this, the first football game, I want to say, that came out. Obviously, there was Tech Mobile, which was the. Atari had one before that. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Tech Mobile became the hot football game. Yes. And I remember a friend of mine and I used to play even into the 90s. Yeah. Because they kept making them until. The first Nintendo stopped, or Sega stopped, and then Madden became yep. the thing to buy. But I remember I couldn't run, and he couldn't throw. So <laughs> it, I'd have 68 passes. He'd have 70 runs against each other. And the funniest part was one the first time we ever played, I got the ball into the end zone on a kickoff, and I had to kneel down, and he's laughing so hard he can't tell me to kneel. Yeah. So he tackles me for a safety. I was pretty ticked. <laughs> so was, there was a football game, too, called 10-Yard Fight. Yeah. And I remember that, too, being a, 
a game I enjoyed, even though it was very, very weird and hard to play. Huh. Because uh, it was like six on six, mm-hmm. which made it weird. But yeah. Uh, but the, the the first, I remember the Nintendo, I, I can remember the games I was obsessed with. Uh, was Mario Brothers at the first and the second? The, the Super Mario Brothers, right? Because right? I had Mario Brothers on Atari, and it, that's wasn't quite the same. Not quite the same, you know. That one, you know, it, they originally showed up in Donkey Kong, and then they made Mario Brothers, which was um, I'm trying to remember exactly how that worked. I think, um, oh goodness, I'm gonna have to look that up because. I, I remember then Super Mario Brothers was, you know, heads and shoulders above that, you know, and uh-huh. it was easy to just play that for hours and hours and hours, you know. Yeah, I want to say that that was mid-80s, 84, 5, 6, something like that. Um, yeah, there was, you know, I remember when you talk about arcade, arcade, I remember when uh, my dad had, was he used to bowl at Village North Bowling. Yeah. Wednesday nights. And they had an arcade there. And the, back then, the arcade, you know, going to the arcade, I mean, that was the coolest thing yeah. you could possibly imagine. And they had a game called Dungeons & Dragons. Uh-huh. And it was super cool if you played with somebody. Yeah. Because you had two people and you would, I don't even remember, you'd fight, you'd do karate moves, and I could play that game just forever, Dungeons mm-hmm. & Dragons. It was awesome. Yeah. And then the other game I remember being obsessed with was The Legend of Zelda. I remember oh, there, yeah. was a, there was, I only rescued the princess like twice, all the whole times that I played it. Right. And, I mean, I can't even remember how to play it, but, God, that game was neat. It was so fun. Yeah. And, again, a game where just the simplicity of it. Um, yeah, now I remember with Mario Brothers, you were you had crabs, you had all sorts of things, and you would have to hit them from underneath. They'd, you know, flip on their head, and then you had to kick them off, and you could go in through tubes, or you know, yeah. Jump, it, it, jump. But it was all, it was all horizontal. Well, horizontal, I guess. Super Mario Brothers was that way too. But yeah, it was just you know a lot more blocky, and it was more simple than because I mean Super Mario Brothers. I'm not saying it was super complicated, but that you had all these levels and you know different objectives. So I, it it was a different game for sure. But yeah, uh, oh man, I remember I I had a ton of Atari games. Um, it wasn't necessarily an awesome game looking back, but you know, just always being someone who loved music from when I was five. Atari put out a game for Journey, the band, uh, with their Escape album, and you were in their uh, Scarab uh, ship, and you, yeah, it, really, yeah, I had that. That was that was good. <laughs> Frogger, uh, Frogger, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, anytime I could use the gun, yeah. And so Duck Hunt, that's I good. I used to try to shoot the dog because he'd laugh at you if you yeah. missed. Oh yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Hogan's Alley. God, I killed that professor so many times. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. You know, yeah. they, they, I tell you what. To this day, maybe the greatest baseball game that I played was this game called Baseball Stars. Okay. And I remember, I think it was for the Sega, but you created players. You got money to play. It was so weird, so much different that it wasn't like you could be the Twins or something. Um, but Baseball Stars was just a great game. And Joe Montana's football was another good one um, that I remember playing just against my friends all the time. And then when this in the 90s came, it became th- the video game started partnering with uh, like the professional sports and yeah. licensing them through that. And then that became incredible to, oh, my God, I'm playing hockey. I'm, I'm Wayne Gretzky. Right. I'm Mario Lemieux. You know, I'm you know Brett Hall, the the you know, the top guys back then, right? Uh, and you know, same thing on all the other sports, and the Sega would come in, and the opening would actually like be the players. It was like a video of them. Yeah. And, you know, the Madden games was just like holy cow. You know, it, it, it it's amazing what they've become. But I I miss the simplicity of it. I miss the simple games. I mean, yeah. The, the, the other stuff's cool, but 
Yeah, I got into some of that with my older kids, you know, a little bit of like Medal of Honor and, and stuff like that. I see you and, playing Guitar Hero. Yeah, I wasn't very good at that, though, I, oddly enough, because it's, it's not like a real guitar. Of course. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and so it's like... Pressing buttons. Yeah, I mean, I, I was okay. I was okay at it, but I, I was nowhere I near stung. the skill level I have on a real guitar, you know. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just... Uh, I go back Tech Mobile. Yeah. Got to be up there and Legend of Zelda has to be up there. Yep, I would agree. I don't know what else I had. I mean, obviously Mario because of just Yeah. but it spawned. I mean, right. and, and you know, um but like I said, I was a big sports gaming guy. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out has to be one of the funnest games. Uh Oh, absolutely. I loved that game. Yeah. And I loved playing it in the um in the arcades too. Um, it was always slightly different at the arcades. Yeah, a little bit. And I liked any chance to play Pac Man too. I mean, you know, I mean that was just uh, yeah the ghosties running after you, Blinky, Pinky, Linky, and Dinky or something. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And so yeah, they were, um, you know, they were great th- games to play. I mean, anytime I still to this day, if there's a Miss Pac Man around. Yeah, I tried. And what was that game where the ball bounces like on the side, and you have like a platform that you're trying to stop it from going by? I can't uh, breakout, I, it, where it would go up and knock out the bricks, and you're trying to get it up on the top and knock out yeah, all the little that's lines. What it's yeah, called, breakout. yeah, breakout. And I remember Space Invaders. That was another game I remember playing. Um, but yeah, I mean, they were they were just uh, yeah. You know, I loved Metroid. Did you play that on yeah, Nintendo? Yeah. Oh, I loved that. Um, Excite Bike was another one I I played. Um, I'm trying to remember. That was a long time ago. I, and I do. I I loved those kind of games. I absolutely did. Hmm. Um, so, well. Just kind of a nostalgia there, seeing somebody playing Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Yeah, on Facebook, it yeah. got me to thinking, and I don't know how that came up because I did not Google that. I did not talk on the phone about it. Um, so yeah, you know. huh? Yeah, you know, it it was it was a different time, you know, and and we still went out and we played outside and we did things and. You know, it was great on a crappy day, and my mom would put the video games. I wasn't allowed to play them during the summer. Yeah, I remember that. She would just say, "Get out of my house." You know, when time your dad gets home, eat then go play ball somewhere. Yeah, and Lions Park, it and Crystal, we'd ride our bikes up there day after day after day after day, hmm. and play baseball all day long. Yeah, we had no water. We had no. <laughs> <laughs> soon as lunch soon as we after well we might have had water but soon after lunch we would yeah and that's that those were the days i tell you what yeah i don't know what the kids do now they get on these headphones and like talk to each other Is yeah that what they do yeah what's the fun in that why don't you come over to their house and play i don't know they all play from their their rooms and wear headphones Sit in the room like it's a jail cell. I couldn't wait to get out on my bike and go to my buddy's house. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's get me out of here. <laughs> All right. Well, anyhow, yeah. uh, on to business, Jay. Uh, before we handle yeah. the task at hand, uh, we had something come across our monitors here, and I just want to address it quick. Uh, Governor Goofy Pants <laughs> decided to. He said it, it's cruel not to let kids transition today. And our illustrious lieutenant govern, governor actually went as far as to say that uh, being a good parent is letting kids transition by by being in touch with who your children are and letting them transition makes you a good parent. Stay away from my kids. <laughs> Yeah, both serious seriously both of you stay away from my kids stay I, away from my kids too and i don't have any i that is the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard 
So by that attitude, whatever the kid wants to get. Yeah. I mean, uh, okay. Oh, uh, kid. 12-year-old kid uh, wants to drive. Well, being a good parent means listening. Uh, and He feels like a driver. Hey. Well, uh, remember, it's not what you think. It's how you feel. Right. He so, feels like a driver. Let him drive. Yeah. He feels like shooting somebody. Oh, well, hey. Yeah. I can't he wants to be a, shoulder, a soldier. I, I can't. I can't help that. He's always wanted to be in the military, you know, and he's just letting that dream come to a realization. <laughs> uh, you think, uh, you know, uh, I just wonder with that crap if it'll ever go too far for a majority of people on the left. Will it ever just go too far? Mm, I think, I think. For some of them, what it, could possibly make it go too far? I just, I think for some of them, it's going to take them getting affected by it. You know, their freedom getting squelched, them so the getting ultimate, the canceled ultimate, or censored. The ultimate arrogance, then. Yeah, it's, it's not no big deal till it happens to me. Right. Yeah, I don't know how far it has to go. I mean, it's gone far enough. Oh, it's beyond gone far. I mean, there, there's, uh, there's, you know, the scene in Crocodile Dundee where uh, Paul Hogan gets uh, has a transvestite hit on him or a drag queen. <sighs> Vaguely, I, I have heard. I haven't seen that movie. Oh, okay, since. there are calls to cut that scene. Are you serious? When it gets played. Yes, that oh, they won't Lord. show it. They won't show the drag queen. We're not going to have a history pretty soon. Anything that happened before 2020 is going to be racist or yeah, I mean, it pretty transphobic. Much, pretty or, much is. Pretty much is. We're not going to have a history, and, and that's a dangerous place to be. Because if we don't have a history to learn from, it will get repeated. We're repeating it now. We are... We are and I think we talked about this on, on your podcast leading up to the, we're kind of in the same events that led up to world war one. Sure. Sure. Well, we're in a war. We just don't call it that. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Just nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, and you have so many ignoramuses out there. I just, I don't know how to put that nicely, but there's so many Uh, people who just don't care. They're just sponges. Yeah. Repeat what they hear on CNN. I mean, it's just sort of, I don't know. It's just, it it just shows you how effective propaganda is. Yes. And and propaganda doesn't have to come from Joseph Goebbels. No. Propaganda is propaganda. Well, I mean, propaganda came from us. I mean, the Germans learned from us. <laughs> I mean, right? Um, to a degree, I think that's true. Well, Bernays. I mean, the Germans learned everything they they got from Edward Bernays. And he his book, Propaganda, yeah. you know, that is where our media learned it from. That is where Germany learned it from. And that is why <laughs> the left excels at it. Yeah, I mean, go back to the days of the Yellow Press. Um you know, uh, during the Spanish-American War, Mm -hmm. a totally unnecessary, ridiculous war that we fought. Yeah. um, Where millions of people, not millions, but (laughs) we conquered a San Juan Hill to elect a guy president while, you know, everybody else died from yellow fever. Uh, So we just, I mean, totally absurd. And yeah, I mean, the media has never done its job in this country and they're never going to. I mean, the 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 corporate media is never going to do that because they take marching orders. So, mm-hmm. anyhow, I, I have Jay. You know how much I I love the outdoors. Absolutely. And how much you I and love. me both. I, I'm an Eagle Scout, yeah. and so I spent a lot of my youth in the outdoors. And you know, I still I, fish when I can. And I don't enough, and I know yeah. you don't either. I know. I, and I, if I could have a life of just being in the outdoors, I would take it in a heartbeat. Hmm. Uh, I miss it. I love it. Yeah. Any chance to be on a lake, just any chance to be outside grilling, any chance to, I I mean, I love camping. I love just all that stuff. Yeah. And as usual, anything I like Uh gets effed by this state. You know, Joe Sushri always put it best. Minnesota, the state where nothing is allowed. Right. It's it's just so uh-huh. true. But you know, 
I, I, first off, first off, we're going to pick on the DNR today, the Department of Natural Resources, and with good reason. Yeah. They do have a legitimate function, I believe. Yeah. You don't want things to get overfished, overhunted, you know. But the definition of that has become very warped. Yes. And the DNR in this state, I would argue, makes law. And I believe they don't have the right to make law. Now, having said that, yeah, who who? Okay, let me just back up a second. When you go buy a fishing license, a hunting license—I don't hunt anymore. But when you go buy a fishing license, you'd think that would be a very simple process, and it is to a point. Yeah, and to a point, it isn't. Because you get a little booklet with you, but it, it's right. not very little. No, it's it's not. Every time I get it, it's more pages and more. It's a hundred pages last year Ugh, of goodness. rules, regulations, yeah. and what you can fish for and can't fish for. Every lake is different. Every river Public is lake, different. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, right. Which is about a third of the lakes in Minnesota. Um, there are general rules and special rules. There are mm-hmm. what they're called slots when you go fishing, and I'll get into that. We'll get into that a little yeah. later, but. Um, and you want to, I mean, sh- if, if I go fishing somewhere, Jay, should I have to take a hundred pages of no. rules and regulations with Absolutely me? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It just, I mean, I think about it going, I think of myself as a kid putting a worm on the end of a, now I grew up with a private lake, but yeah. we still kind of followed the rules. Yeah. You, I grew up on a, going to a private lake too. Yeah. And so it was. So. You put a worm on the end, sit on the end of the dock. It was so innocent and yeah. fun. And maybe I'd catch a perch or a sunfish, which are good right. eats, by the way. Yeah. Sunfish uh, or a bass. Good. Yeah. I, I, I would catch bass off the dock as well. Really? Now, the lake I grew up in, well, we still have it. I mean, my uncle yeah. lives there now. But um, that mostly had perch, crappie, sunfish, and northern. I. Yeah. There was a creek to another lake called Cutaway Lake. My dad and I canoed it one time. Huh? Not very fun to canoe. So. Oh, I bet not. I bet not. Uh, the lake that I grew up going to, Black Hoof Lake, uh, there was a, the Black Hoof River comes through there as well. But oh, yeah, okay. very shallow. And there's a lake. Lily pads. And yeah, oh, was... yeah. And, and there's a lake. Uh, that actually is named after my family up in Carleton County. Uh, we didn't live on that lake, but at one time that was in the property I, of, of my family after they came from Sweden called huh. Elstrom Lake. Huh. Uh, so that's still there. I've been to it. I've never actually got to fish it. Someday I'd love to fish it. Cause I could, I can get there from canoe if I can get the canoe, you know, I, to clear, you know, through the Black Oaf River and stuff and get into the lake. But I'd otherwise, like it, it's, it's completely no, private. No, uh, I can canoe. Yeah. Uh, remember, I'm an Eagle Scout. Oh, God. You were an Eagle Scout in 1952. I don't know if that <laughs> works out. Today. I was a little lighter. Right? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, so so this, this Department of Natural Resources. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Jay. Yes. Who governs the Department of Natural Resources? Well, it now, falls under the governor. Okay, but I mean, but but yeah. if the DNR wants to put a regulation on Lake A yeah. for something, who tells them yes or no? <sighs> you know, I I would bet <laughs> that that... Pro- well, I mean, I, I don't know the answer. I'm- I don't either. I I would assume that any law has to come through the legislature and, and signed by the governor. But then how that's applied and what lakes it's applied on, I assume that just comes through the DNR, uh, that they would... And by the way, do you know who the head of the DNR is in Minnesota? No, I don't. Former mayor of Ramsey, really? Sarah Stroman. That huh. is the former... Uh, another... Democratic politician, right? Um, and I'm sure she's an avid. Yeah, hunter what and what qualifies her to to be? Right. The, I'd like to know. I like Ms. Stroman. I'd like to know your qualifications for this, other than being a Tim Walls donor. I'd like to know what 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 yeah. qualifies you to run this. Um, so, and then there's oh look at that beauty, commissioner's leadership team 
Barb Naramore. Boy, that looks like a fisherman. <laughs> Bob Meyer, the assistant commissioner. Jess Richards, the assistant. Co- How many assistants do you need? <laughs> Another assistant commissioner, Shannon, Shannon Luttehammer. So five people have to try to run it. And you'll be glad to know that that uh, she is an avid upland bird hunter uh, and has a de- bachelor's degree in biology. Yeah. So maybe she knows what a man and a woman is. Uh, you know. Well, she might. <laughs> yeah, might, but I don't know. Um that uh what's it what's it what is a what is a a a so biology people are into the DNR, huh? Yeah. I mean I guess you gotta be all sciencey and stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what I don't want, and that's exactly what I don't want there. Is a sciencey Yes. Yeah. I don't want to hear their Bill Nye the science guy garbage. So <laughs> I mean, my question is this: When the DNR, why, why doesn't the legislature ever haul the DNR commissioner in front of? I wonder if they ever had any hearings on her. By the way, I don't know uh, how. Before, uh, just looking at the this office of the commissioner again, a lot of diversity there, Dems. Yeah, I know. I mean, you got uh, a couple men, three women. They're all white. Yeah, where's know. the transgender lesbian? There or the you know yeah, African American, the non-binary, uh, half from African, Laos, yeah, you know, there's, where's the Somali? Where's yeah, uh, not, not people that come here from Laos and Cambodia love to fish. Yeah. How come none of them are on well, the DNR? Where's the inclusion and in, yeah. in all that? I mean, if this were a police department, they'd be under mm-hmm. the microscope. About every it. time I go up and I'm fishing, like at the uh coon rapids dam or something like that i see lots of african americans and asian americans and all that kind of thing up there um hmm. so i i think uh i think it'd be a little more diverse than that i guess not i guess it's the plantation owners are still in charge yeah um now i want to explain something like you know when i was a kid i remember you know certain limits on fish and and they were pretty universal uh it did not it did not change a whole lot lake to lake right now uh you can't say that right and i got a few stories on but first off i want to explain some regulations to people yeah 15 used to be the crappie limit statewide right i don't know when it was sometime in the 90s late 90s they dropped it to 10 some lakes they've dropped it to as little as like three. Really? Which makes no sense. Three crappies, that wouldn't. You and I couldn't put that on a sandwich, Jay. I don't right. know. I, again, I don't know who's doing the sunfish. Remember that used to be 20. Right. Then it dropped to 15. Uh-huh. Then I, I think it dropped to 10. I know it does on some lakes. Yeah. Um, and sunfish are not all that big either. No. Um, Northerns, I mean, uh, three is the standard, which is yeah. weird because you can catch northerns like nothing, if right? You're, you know, stupid enough like me. Um, but but lake but lake to lake has been is so wacky in this state. Yeah, and I assume it's like this in other states too that are outdoors. I'm sure Wisconsin has not as much, but. And I'm sure states like Wyoming, Montana, any of these yeah. big freshwater lakes, I'm sure they have less, but <laughs> <laughs> rules that we do, but still a lot. Yeah. And I think one of the things that concerns me about all these rules and regulations from the DNR and how casual and how little debate that there is and how uh, is is the effect this has on a local city or economy throughout the state of Minnesota, especially in greater Minnesota, which is already behind yeah. the rest of us, whether that's in broadband, whether that's in highway funding, whether that's in education per student funding. I mean, they're, especially under the DFL in yeah. the last 20 years or so under Dayton and Walls, it's a total metrocentric. If you're not in the metro, Duluth or Rochester, you are not a part 
of the state anymore. They've done so much to alienate the the inner city versus out state. It's never been worse in the state of Minnesota. Yeah. And when you look at a city of a thousand people mm-hmm. that has one big lake in it. Yeah. That big lake, I guarantee you, is the lifeline of that city. Absolutely. So a regulation change on that lake, which I'll give some examples of that I've seen, yeah, can have a tremendous effect on those people, their lives, their jobs, uh, and everything else. It's mm-hmm. incredible. Now, I'm going to give you one example to start. If you think of any, you, you jump in and let me know. Okay. Big Sandy Lake. You ever been on Big Sandy? Lake I have not before? been on Big McGregor? Sandy. No. Okay. I used to, I call it, it's a beautiful lake. Huh. Just a wonderful lake. Been on Sandy Lake in, uh, around the Mattawa area, but that's a much smaller. It has, okay. has Northerns. Okay. That's well, good. Yeah. They're good eats. Yeah. Um, but they're, um, there's a lot of bays and inlets and, and uh, there's a lot of shallow areas. And it's just, it's a very fun great lake to fish on and a few buddies of mine and i used to fish on lake we quit yeah because of the rules and regulation now mcgregor is a city of 500 people yeah or whatever it is something like that and everybody talks about the resorts and all well, such as the resorts yeah this local bar and grill the local campground the local gas station yeah I mean, they're all affected they're all the tour- bait shops yeah, yeah. they're all Dependent on people who don't live there. Right. <clears throat> and let me tell you how ridiculous the regulations there got. This was uh, maybe 10 years ago. I mean, I, 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 I might be wrong. I was still working for Best Buy. So, I mean, it was, I might be wrong on the year exactly, but 2009, 10, 11, somewhere around there. Remember, I was up there on a Labor Day weekend because we were listening to the Gophers. I was listening to the Gopher football game on the way up. Yeah. I fished all day Sunday and all day Monday, Labor Day weekend. Okay. They had this was one of they were one of like five lakes in the entire state that had a slot, and I'll explain what that is, for both northerns and walleyes. A slot means yeah. that you have a minimum and a maximum that if you catch within that slot, you have to immediately release it. Yeah. Um walleyes the slot was 17 to 26 inches. Now stop and think about that for a minute. Wow. A perfect walleye yes. is about 17 to 20 inches. Right. You get a walleye that's too big, it's not very good eating. It tastes like my shoe. You yeah. take a picture of it and you throw it back. That's what you do with that yep. now. Um, you could eat a trophy walleye. I, I, it just takes very lake watery. That's you can't get the lake water taste out of it. That's right. what I always think. It's mush. It tastes like mush. You can't yeah. get it. But a a fourteen fifteen incher is not a ton of meat on it's it. It's hard to clean. Yeah. It's it's kind of. I I mean, if you get one sixteen and three quarters, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> and the northerns, twenty four to thirty six inches. <laughs> Have to immediately be thrown back. Wow. You can only keep three. Yeah. One over 36 inches. With If you eat a trophy northern, you are, you might as well go catch an eel. They, they just, they're uh. just, they're not, that's another thing. You take a picture of it, you throw it back. Right. Okay. So I don't know what the point is of the trophy. I, I don't really get that. Right. It makes no sense. And I'm going to tell you, my friends and I, in two days, God, we went through five dozen shiners at least between the three of us. Wow. 60 shiners. Yeah. We pretty much fished till we ran out of bait. Hmm. We kept three fish was what we could keep. Now, me, I wanted to cheat. Uh. I would have cheated. One of my friends wouldn't cheat. So maybe we kept four. I, I know I didn't bring much fish home. I was pretty ticked. Yeah. And... It was two small walleye and two, like, 21-inch northerns that were not fun to clean either. No. I mean, they're, they're, they're tough. They're tough to debone. And, uh, right. They have, they have this something called the Y-bone, which if you take it out of there, it, you won't get bones, but you lose about 10 15% of the meat. Right. 
Um, man, we barely had enough to divide up and take. Yeah, you Jesus. don't take those out. You're picking them out of your teeth. Yeah, you are, so, period. Yeah. So, I mean, it was... I drove away going, I am not going back to that lake again. Yeah. It was fun. We drank a lot. We told the same stories over and over. We grilled. I mean, it was fun two days. Yeah. But I'm like, till they get rid of that, I ain't going there. Now, keep in mind, when we were up there, we got bait at the local bait shop. We got gas at the local gas station. <laughs> we, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was we, we stayed at the local camp, Savannah State Park. Yes. You know, which had a couple lakes in it, too. I mean, all of those places are losing our business Yeah, when we decide to take that lake and go somewhere else. So the effect on that little community, if 5% of their customers do that, yeah, what is the effect on this, on this community that has no say in what goes on at that lake? Now, if that were, if that were, a, a, you know, a lumber yard and the state came in and started saying, no, you can only take so much lumber out of here. You can only sell right. so much. Yeah. You know, if, if a log is 17 to 26 inches, you got to burn it. <sighs> you know, I think people would be more up in arms about it, but the idea that it's, that it's a lake to fish in, and I just wonder, you know, how many people are like, well, you know, this this is they got ten thousand lakes in this state. We don't have to come here. Yeah. The effect that can have on that little community. So when I sit here and I look at these rules and and, and so on and so forth, I, I just wonder if if anyone is thinking in St. Paul outside of St. Paul. Yeah. Nobody is. I don't know. And that's the problem. They're trying to... I mean, yes, they've got DNR agents all over the state, and it's their job to go through, and every few years or whatever, you you net the lake, and you try to find out what your fish populations are, and you you know all of that kind of stuff. Which I might but, say is an inexact science. Right. I mean, I think they draw more conclusions on that than you should, but that's yeah. me. Yeah, that's true. I mean, lakes but... cycle naturally too. I mean, it, you know, I'll give you an example. Take take to the lake that I grew up with, Plantation Lake in Grand Rapids. Yes. I remember catching a lot of crappies when I was younger. We'd hit my dad and I would go out there and we we would play by the rules even though we didn't have to. Yeah. You remember there was this this red tree. This weirdest like red pine tree. Yes. And that was our, we'd go back and forth from one side to that pine tree. And there was this beaver dam. And I remember those were, that was kind of our markers. And we'd catch 10 apiece. Yeah. And then in the 90s, I remember they shriveled up. I don't know what happened. Hmm. But it was hard to catch them for a while. And then they cycled back later, uh, like in the 2000s. And you could catch more and catch more and catch them ice fishing. And right. So it was, it was weird. Lakes do that, I think. I don't think that is that is necessarily, certainly wasn't from overfishing. They were the only ones out there. I mean, it was, <laughs> my grandma and grandpa at the time lived, they've since passed away, but they were the only people who lived there. So I mean, we certainly weren't overfishing. Right. Um, so I think I think they draw too many conclusions from that. Um, I don't know that, that, uh, I, again, I just feel it's too nitpick. I feel like they do it to give themselves something to do more than yeah. any other reason. Well, you take a huge lake like Leech Lake or Red Lake or what are the top lakes in Minnesota? Vermilion has to yeah. be one. Winnemagosh. Pe Pelican Lake is yeah. a popular one. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't know yeah. that you can net a few fish and draw a whole lot of conclusions from that. I don't right. know. I just think those lakes are so big. Some of them, like, you know, have Mississippi River run through them. Yeah, that's uh, true. You got fish that come and go all the time. Yeah, so I don't... Even with some of the smaller ones where you have connecting rivers. Yeah. Uh, that happens a lot. So I, I don't know. I don't know that that's a real fair thing to, to do or yeah. draw from. <clears throat> but I'll give you another example. 
Here's another one. Yeah. Lake Kagatogama. Yes. Up by the border. I fished that one time. Yes. For two days. The walleye there were biting like crazy. Yeah. Could barely keep any. Really? 16 to 26 was the slot there. My goodness. And you could catch a walleye off the dock. There were so many walleye in that lake. Yeah. And that's a lake that little bit of it drifts into Canada, and I, right. that's where you get a little gray area of, <laughs> I'm not sure. My buddies and I might have been in Canada for a little while. Yeah. Well, you got to be careful, too. You uh, do. Uh, I mean, I've fished rainy uh, ones. Most of rainies in Canada, yeah. actually. Yeah. You got to be so careful, because if your boat drifts over into Canada, you're in a lot of trouble you're if subject- you get pulled over. <laughs> yeah, you're subject to, Yeah. I mean, technically, you're illegally fishing. Right. You know, yeah. Unless you... You're you're a non Canadian citizen with no right. Canadian, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm sure Trudeau he'll name he'll nail you anytime. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the the um. Anyway, fishing Kegatogama, I, I can remember walleye just never caught so many. Yeah. And kept so few. Oh, that's and I crazy. know at that lake, your typical lake for walleye, the limit is six a person, one over twenty inches. That is the standard. Yeah. Through Minnesota, twenty six inches is a trophy. But we we cheated. I'm just like we're cheating. I'm not coming all the way up here catching all these walleye. Was, yeah, I was crying throwing them back. Uh, you know, there are times where you go walleye fishing, you don't catch any. Yeah. So to catch forty and keep three was, I was upset. Let's put yeah. it that way. <laughs> I mean, again, look at how ridiculous you make. I haven't been back there. That was yeah. like 2013. I mean, I haven't been back there since. I don't blame you. So. I'm not going there if I, you know, spend all that money, all that gas driving up, and come home with a meal that barely I can eat. Right. It ain't happening. So, you know, it's just, uh, sorry, but it ain't going to happen. I mean, what was where, what lakes did you fish when you were a kid? I mean, you remember, other than the lakes like your family was, do you ever right. remember, like, oh, yeah. going uh, to, I remember my dad and I, I remember some of the lakes we'd go up to. Up in Duluth, you know, there was Fish Lake, there was Island Lake. Um, I got to go out with my uncle a few times on Lake Superior and really? and do some you know down rigging and stuff like that. That was fun. Wow. Uh, I would sometimes like my dad would take us out uh, ice fishing on uh, the St. Louis River and we'd go for uh, eel pout. You know, poor oh, man's lobster. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, they, they were also called lawyers because they were slippery. <laughs> <laughs> Did you use leeches to catch them? Uh, <laughs> that would have been great. That would have been too good. I don't remember what we used. It was probably like shiners or yeah. something like that. But, yeah, um, there was that. Uh, those were probably the most popular were, the, you know, those spots. But, yeah, there were other places up there that I know that I hit, too. Um, you know, there up. You know, my family had the place in uh, Black Hoof, but... There now, was, now where there was a is Spring now, Lake up now, there? Now where is as well. Black Hoof? Can you explain? It's in Carleton County. It's not too far from the city of Mattawa. Okay. Uh, it's a township. Black Hoof is a township, and so there's a lot of private lakes around there. So there's a couple of with with public. So from Proctor, too, but, where you grew up, how far was that? Uh, half an hour south yeah. or whatever, forty minutes maybe. Yeah. So. Well, the great thing about Itasca County, you know, Grand Rapids, is, yeah. is so many lakes you can try out. Oh, yeah. I mean, just literally, you just wouldn't believe it. Oh, yeah. Um, I've I've fished Pekegama so many times. Uh, I've fished Pekegama in Pine County uh, by Pine City and also in Grand Rapids. Mm. Uh, there's a couple of them. Pekegama, I've actually been out on the golf course more times yeah. than I've been <laughs> on the lake there. <laughs> There's there's lakes yeah. to try. The, the problem, one of the problems in that area is you got a lot of lakes that are deep and clear. Right. They're f- good lakes to go goof off on. They're not the great. There's North Star Lake and Marcel, which is like that beautiful lake. Yeah. But it's not a great fishing lake. Wabana is the same thing. Huh. Um, trout. There's a trout. Well, there's a million trout lakes. But yeah. The one I'm thinking of is another deep and clear lake. Yeah, which is not a great fishing lake, but man, if you're out there on a pontoon, it's a mm. great time just out on the lake. I like, of course, Spider Lake, the lake that I 
used to go up to a week every yeah. year, a uh, big time northern lake. Hard to catch a walleye there, but you can yeah. catch anything else. Um, yep. That's basically three lakes into yep. one. Big lake out of Cloquet, I fished quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I mean, you, you could, in a lifetime, I don't know how many lakes you could hit in, in Minnesota. Right. I'll tell you one lake that I don't know how many more times I'm going to fish. Yeah. And I love the lake. I love the area. I love driving there. Yeah. I, I don't so much love the casino anymore. Uh, but that's Mille Lacs. Yeah. And you want, Mille Lacs has got to be, you know, it's got to be like a top five biggest lake in the state. So, yeah. I mean, I, I would guess Upper and Lower Red Lake is number one um like we talked about winnebagosh mm-hmm. brevillian uh Kagatogama, they have to be up in the top 10 but i don't know exactly what those are but anyway um and i'll tell you malax got so crazy at one time i yeah. don't know how it is now because quite frankly i don't care to go on it anymore right but the regulations changed daily <sighs> There were these DNR in Garrison, the DNR, right by that big fish, you know, where yeah. the, that statue is. There's a DNR booth there. And and when I used to fish there, the landing we used was just north of Garrison. Because okay. my buddy's cabin was on 18, like you're heading to Brainerd. Yep. So we would come out. There used to be a <laughs> Lake Kinney and Lake Borden. Yeah. There's a bar in between them, and we spent half our time there. And by the time we got out to the lake, it was a little, little rough. Um, but at the, we'd have to stop there before we go to the landing to see what the new regulations were for the day. Oh my goodness! Yes, you new regulations every day, and I know where they they were on the east side, down by Isle, in the southwest side by the casino by. Uh, uh-huh. Eddie's Resort, that yep. was where the other one was. It was just north of that. There's a big landing down there on the southwest side. Right. So you had to go there to get the daily regulations. That was how crazy it was um, for a time. And I don't know if it's like that anymore. But, I mean, you talk about Mille Lacs, You talk about a lake where, I mean, from a casino to cities to campground. I mean, I don't even know if you could quantify. How many businesses are around Mille Lacs Lake? Right. Yeah, it's it's a lot, you know. Businesses as big as McDonald's, uh, right. you know, and, and, you know, corporations like that. Down franchise. To, but yeah. Somebody to, owns that franchise. Absolutely. Down to, you know, the small mom and pop places. The campgrounds, the, the resorts, the... the Go down aisle and it's just nothing but welcome fishermen. To, yeah, they got their own little grocery store. And right. I mean, it's all dependent on people visiting the area. Right. Uh, you know, in between the casino and Garrison, you've got all of those like little cabins that yeah. are right across the road from the lake, and you know, it's you got that on the east side too in Forty Seven. Yeah. The same thing. And so, I mean, it. Yeah. It. <sighs> I don't know what to say when the regulations get that crazy, but I come back to what is the check and balance on them? What is the, wh- where is the, the, um, who governs them? I mean, you might say, well, they're in the executive branch and that's true. Yeah. But I mean, what does Tim Walls have the uh, authority to overrule the DNR? Uh, ultimately he would. Yeah. So he can come in and, and take the regulations book and light it on fire. If he wants, I imagine he could, uh, well, I would he, assume he shut that, down the state. I guess he can yeah. do anything. You know, like I said, the legislature makes the laws, but then the DNR, they figure out how to apply those laws. Okay. But that, wait a minute. Though. Yeah. That's, that's where we've got a problem. Right. Because if, if, if the DNR can make regulations, fine me, take yep. my fish, t- yep. suspend my license. There's no accountability. And, the you know, then, then who do I hold accountable for that? Yeah. Nobody. So Tim they're, Walls. Yeah, they're making law. That is the ultimate thing they're doing. Yeah. I they're, mean, when you look at it. They're making their own law and enforcing it. In the microcosm of a singular lake, you know, uh, you know, pick one, uh, Rice Lake, just up out of Duluth or something like that. Uh, you know, they make the rules that govern that lake. I mean, it, in a microcosm, you 
kind of are. If if it was a city that the DNR was over, you'd call those ordinances, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I, they've kind of been given these broad sweeping powers over every body of water. Yeah. But I it, it, and the forest, too, when it comes to hunting and, and you right. know, birds and deer and uh, all that kind of stuff, small game. Doe permits. Yeah. I mean, uh, elk, moose, whatever, bear, all of that. A, a duck. Yeah. They have total reign over all of that. And mm-hmm. I mean, it is, like I say, I mean, outdoors stuff is, how about, how about this? Do they have, do they have regulations over like snowmobile trails and uh, things like that? I mean, does the DNR regulate those kind yeah. of uh Things like four wheelers, you know, like ATV trails. I, I think mean, they do um, because that, yeah, it, somebody's got to regulate those but I mean, things. Like, there are state trails, and I, I don't know about like your regional trails. I, I imagine Minnesota would have to be over those too because you know, no one city would would manage that. Yeah, or county. I mean, go to um, northern Minnesota. Some are fifty miles long. Yeah, I, I you know. Yeah, so they have off-highway vehicle regulations. Uh, if you look at the DNR website, um, but I gotta say, yeah, the 2024 booklet, or I'm sorry, sorry, 2023 booklet, I believe is already being pre- already out there. If you go there, yeah, and I keep it, it goes about a hundred pages long just for fishing. Just an FYI on that, right? <clears throat> so. But yeah, they've got manuals for all that kind of stuff too. They've got a, a book for for off highway vehicle regulations. Um, they've got rules for youth riders. Um, they have you know youth as passengers, youth operators, um, <laughs> hunting with ATVs. So yeah, they they manage all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so uh, recreation destinations nature education and safety licenses permit and regulations events and seasons yeah they got all sorts of stuff so here's what it says on a recreation biking and inline skating they can even I, I suppose if it's on a regional trail they have the or state trail they have the the say so over that boating camping I suppose in your state parks and stuff canoeing sure. and kayaking cross country skiing Fishing, hiking, horseback riding, hunting and trapping. Horseback riding? Yeah. Well, I suppose there are trails for that, too, if you're doing it on a state or regional trail. Yes, if you're not on a private property. I yeah, suppose. if you're on public if you're on public land. Hunting and trapping. Nature viewing. <laughs> Nature viewing. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're out there stargazing? What, can you only do that for three to six minutes? You got to throw it back? <laughs> Holy. Yeah, off highway vehicle riding, recreation compass, shooting sports, snowmobiling, snowshoeing. Uh, it says there's even more. Uh, oh, swimming is in there as well. Um, let me just look at oh ge- geology recreation. I suppose you can't take certain rocks or something like that. Uh, they they list some of the places. Uh, that are of geo, geo, geologic significance. You know, talk about some of the state parks. Where can I go to find agates? And then talks about what you're able to do as far as collecting materials. Uh, you know, talks about uh, it. Even talks about uh, can you prospect for gold on dry land? Can I? You pan for gold in Minnesota streams and rivers. Oh, please uh, tell under- me you can. Just I was thinking about doing that this summer. Were you? No, but I mean, just- <laughs> <laughs> the state of Minnesota defines recreational gold prospecting as an activity involving limited use of handheld, non-mechanical, non-motorized tools such as a gold pan and a hand shovel or other hand tools for digging and classifying material. The gold panning activity must have a minimum impact on the area prospected. Minimum impacts would be the same type of impact impacts 
as caused by wading or swimming. Gold panning must not disturb fish in aquatic plant habitat and may not be conducted in areas where mineral collecting activities are prohibited, such as state parks. The state does not require a permit for this type of recreational activity yet. In the state-owned beds of streams, rivers, and lakes. Um, but the department's conservation officers and local peace officers may prohibit activities at specific sites when they find damage is occurring or may occur. How do you know if damage may occur? It's the it's the uh, gold preemption law. Yeah. Uh, fish spawning season. The number of individuals along a confined stretch of water or other sensitivity of the area may result in the panning activities being prohibited. No one should pan in the bed of a designated trout stream without first contacting the department's local area fisheries manager. Uh, everybody knows who that is. The, I, the area hydrologist may also be contacted to help identify natural resource concerns. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the guy that's, who turns your faucets That's on awesome. That, that's fantastic. I'm glad that... Uh, this is, I mean, this, this encompasses a lot of stuff. You basically can't do anything outside without the DNR having a say. Right. Right, exactly. Um. I looked at their nature viewing page and it, it doesn't look like it lays out really any rules there. It tells you all about uh, watching. Well, well, let me go a little further into that. Oh yeah. It, it talks more about tourism and seeing animals and whatever bird checklist for state parks. They actually paid somebody to make a bird checklist for state parks. That's your tax money at work right there. <laughs> And don't you know a blue jay or a cardinal when yeah. you hear a hummingbird? Yeah, an owl. You don't know. <laughs> Who? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of owls, there was a kid I went to school with who could turn his head all the way around. <laughs> oh, my word. If he's listening, his name was Peter Mayakula. And I remember he sat in front of me one time, and he could literally turn his entire head around. I don't believe that. I'm not making it 360 up. degrees. Yeah, 180. Oh, wow. Well. But he could turn his head completely around like, <laughs> a, no like a transformer and look <laughs> right behind him. So, uh, yeah, he could. I'm telling you he could. I Believe yeah. me, I seen it. I seen oh, it boy. happen. But, yeah, as long as it happens outside, it looks like the DNR has its fingers in it. So long as it's not on private property, because they really can't have a say. They really can't, but... But they try to, and especially with private lakes. I mean, they definitely influence it. I mean, you know... I, and, the, the, the lake that that my family grew up going to was a private lake, and every so often it the DNR would come and do their netting and their fish counts and all of that. They didn't really send a DNR agent out to patrol the lake. Here's my time, question. But, Here's my question, though. Yeah. If you're on a private lake, can you still have X amount of fish in possession? Let me give you an example. Okay. Let's say in my freezer, I got 10 walleyes in there. Yeah. I caught them on a private lake. Yeah. But am I allowed to have that in possession? Probably not. So can the, DS the state laws would be other applicable. otherwise. Yeah. But can the DNR walk into my house and they would have to be able to get a warrant based on you know so it ha having probable cause so that, okay so sonia sotomayor uh, issues a warrant sonia does, sotomayor, does, i don't think she's deciding that yeah but, but yeah. i mean you think about it i mean i mean they would have to somehow know like they you put a picture of 10 walleyes in your freezer up on facebook and said look at all these walleyes and they would really, that's what they'd spend their time doing? I don't doing? know that they would. And, By and, the way, what's the point of taking them? It's not like the fish can be thrown back. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, they do have a lot of authority, though. I mean, they can take your fish. They can yeah. spend your license. They yep. can, and it's not like you've got some sort of, not like you're innocent until proven guilty. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, they can do a lot there to you. I, I just, I think it's a department out of control. And I think it's, it's again... Here's my question too. Where do where do people who really fish and really make a living where do they have a say in this? Because to me, it's a lot like people who want gun laws, and if I dropped a gun in front of them, they couldn't tell me anything about it. Yeah. How do you shoot this? How do you load this? How do you? Right. 
I don't know. But yep. we just need red flag laws. Right. Okay, well, you don't I just know, know guns aren't safe. Yeah, you yeah. Just, they just repeat what they heard on The View, and right. they don't know anything about it. And it's the same thing here. I don't perform heart surgery because I don't know anything about it. Right. So I'm not going to make gun... Or, if you, I'm not going to make laws about old ladies knitting because I don't know anything about it. Where is the education that comes with that? Where is the where are where is our our elected officials, not government bureaucrats, not career people, working in this department that you know we can are supposed to oversee this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, as we've seen across government, I mean, they hire people that aren't qualified, and that seems to make them qualified for and the like job. And like we keep saying, the more they fail, the more they suck, yeah. the better and further they go. Yeah. Actually doing something gets you fired. Yeah. Like the guy from How I Met Your Mother said, that's what corporate America wants. People who talk about doing things but never actually do them actually doing them gets you fired mm. and that's government so yeah the more you fail the better you're doing so you know i i just i just come back to you know how much these little decisions can affect these local economies and these local everybody keeps saying they want to help greater minnesota yeah yet what they don't understand is and I, I, I take this with gun laws, too, is that fishing and hunting and snowmobiling and, you know, all, all those other things, camping, all those other things are the lifeline of so many small towns in greater Minnesota. And yeah. the more you choke them, the harder it is for them to, and, and just like no one's listening. Right. No one cares. I mean, it's just, it's just. Is there going to be anybody fishing in 30 years? Are we the last generation? You know, millennials don't do that. I mean, uh, uh, some do. Not, you know? not enough. Not enough. I agree with that. But then what do you do when you have an overabundance of fish or deer or or turkey or whatever, roughed grouse and you're not a lot and you don't have people taking them. You know, I guess they live in everybody's backyard, I guess <laughs> is what they do. Live in your uh, truck bed. I, don't know. I mean, that's the whole. We are reason. poaching their land to a point. Yeah, I, I. I mean, it's not the whole reason for hunting. I mean, from a DNR's perspective, the whole reason to allow hunting is to control the the animal populations. But for us, it's food, it's sustenance, um, which. I, I understand the reason to have seasons and to have limits and all of that kind of stuff. You don't want people poaching and you don't want people There's over a logic hunting, over it. fishing. However, I will say Declaration of Independence says that God gives us a right to life, right? And part of sustaining that life is being able to eat. And if you are homeless, don't have a job or whatever, isn't then hunting a God-given right. Isn't hunting how they... They didn't have a grocery store back in 1800, yeah. right? I mean, isn't... Didn't they go outside and hunt for dinner? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't so, know. I, you know, say you're having trouble putting food on the table, you know? Uh, you can always take the old smooth bar out and go turkey hunting, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a season for that, too, so it's... Yeah, you know, you mentioned spawning. That's another thing I questioned the DNR on. Whether yeah. That's really how it, they claim it happens. I mean, oh, 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 muskie need one more week. Right. Really? Okay, well, muskie's a northern. Yeah. You can go for northerns two weeks earlier. What? I, I, I don't know. I yeah. just think it's... Again, I think that's where it just goes too far. It just goes too far yeah. to do that stuff, like you said. I understand seasons. I understand some limitations. And also, I also believe that, that maybe the, the locals need to have a say in some of this stuff. Whether, yeah, absolutely. Whether or not, you, know, you know, they're the people who fish and, and uh, are around those lakes all the time. I mean, I don't know. It's to, like I said, to go to, yeah. to have to take a booklet with me to, to figure out what I can and can't keep. Uh huh. 
you know, you just have some blanket rules and that would make things right. better. Yeah. And by the way, they stock lakes too. I mean, oh, absolutely here's another they thing. do. If, if you're low on walleye in the lake, you st- yep. they stock lakes every year. What, absolutely what they this? do. What is this that you can't? I, I don't know. I, yeah. I think they're playing politics with it. I think they're doing things to justify their jobs. And that's, you know, it's just never government bureaucrats run amok. I mean, like you said, when there's no accountability, when there's no holds, nobody there to say, no, you've gone and going and going. And too many people just grab their ankles in a state. They they, they don't fight back. They don't, uh, you know, make their voices heard. And I, I, for one, would like some answers to maybe Ms. Stroman, maybe I should send her an email. Yeah. See if she responds to me. Of course, I got to get my email working, don't right? I? But I mean, you know, just I'm just like who's who's policing you? You know, go- government is is I don't get my rights from government. So, you know, who's who's putting the limit? Who's the check and balance on the Department of Natural Resources? The governor. <laughs> yeah, some check and balance he is. He right, he can do anything he wants to. So exactly. Um. And I don't know if you've ever been to any of the hatcheries or anything like that. There was one up mm-hmm. on, I think, French River that I used to go to with my dad once in a while and about how they manipulate fish populations and stuff. But, like, French River, is, it, it goes down into um, uh, Lake Superior. And so, mm. you know, they would they would hatch stuff there and, and then let it go to the river. And um, I know smelting was big up there. Yeah. Uh, my dad, my grandpa, my great grandpa, they were all smelters. Uh, uh, whoever smelted and, Delta. Yep, exactly. <laughs> but they were pulling so many smelt out of the river. The fishermen were up there that I know that the population of the smelt had suffered too. So, but uh, smoke smelt, that's, that's some good stuff. It is. Oh, oh. tell you what. Go up and buy some. And, What's the opener about yeah. seven weeks away? If we actually have open water, <laughs> yeah. If we what, do, what are, by what that? are the odds on? If yeah. in May we have open I, water, I can remember yeah. one year. Uh, uh, oh, it was oh seven, oh eight, oh nine. You know, more evidence of global warming. By the way, right? I remember it snowed in Grand Rapids opening weekend. Yeah, and the water no had just opened. Maybe ten days before that, and I'm going to yeah. tell you, it was windy. I have deer hunted in warmer weather. Yeah, and once you get the chills out there, boy, oh. you're not. Boy, you put your hand in that yeah. water, oh. even accidentally, like, oops, oh. you're not going to warm up no. anytime it's soon. It's like swimming in Lake Superior in July. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I. Even yeah. my dad and my uncle, who are just gamers, maybe not so much anymore, but yeah. they're just like, yeah, I could use a, I could use a whiskey old fashioned. Why don't we? Why don't we? We had drove to another lake. I mean, we didn't, yeah, because we don't have walleye in our lake, so we we drove to a lake called Burroughs Lake, yeah, uh, north of Grand Rapids. There, about fifteen miles, and so we're like, yeah, time to go in. Uh. Got enough keepers. Yeah. Okay, we'll eat tomorrow. We'll eat fish tomorrow. So it was just, but I'll tell you what, um, you know, I'm concerned with the state of fishing and hunting. I'm concerned with the overregulation. I, I'm just, um, I, I just have a real concern for Greater Minnesota. I, just, I do too. Greater Minnesota is one of the best things we have about this state. Yes. Is our, it's almost, I don't know that there's many states comparable I mean, there's the beach yeah. states and there's the mountain states. Right. I mean, there's states that are very different, but we have just all four seasons. We have a great hunting and fishing, and I just get concerned that at some point it's going to be legislated out. Well, what happens to these small towns? I mean, and and what pushback can they have? I, I mean, that's a great question. You know, you look at places like Or Minnesota, and they're all in on some of this garbage and i don't understand it but you know they're right on pelican lake there and there's some great campgrounds up around pelican lake and things like that but um well wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute it's not pelican lake uh, is it pequot no oh, it is pelican it lake, is pelican actually. i was thinking of uh bacchus minnesota oh i fished a lake called pine mountain lake there. okay 
Bacchus no, is no a, mountains to speak yeah, of in, in Pine yeah, Mountain. Not yes. Bacchus, but <laughs> it was a... Uh, Bacchus is north of... It's like between... I want to say it's west of Leech Lake. I, um, I might have to look up where it was. But you're, okay. look, but you're looking at a town of three or four hundred, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, Pine Mountain Lake. It is on 371 between um, Brainerd and like just north of Pequot Lakes. There. Okay. But I mean, you're looking at a town of 300, and that lake is huge. Yeah. Big. And it's like that lake is everything there. It's everything. To yep. That. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, yeah, Bacchus is like 12 square blocks right off 371. You know, but I, it, yeah, you know, what's going to happen to those little cities? I don't know. I, I, I think that there is a, con, a con, I think there's a cabal that wants to destroy rural America. I really yeah. believe that. Um, that they want everybody crammed into a city. They want everybody out right. of their cars. It, it's not that they and, want to destroy rural America. It's that they want to remove the humans from rural yeah. America. Yes. And, you know, and I keep saying, well, who's going to feed us? Who's going to, um, get the natural resources out of the ground. I mean, who's going to yep. do that? It kind of takes people who kind of live by there, work by there. I don't know. But um, there is this effort to sort of make them second-class citizens. And like I say, we see it here in our state. Look at education funding. Look at highway funding. Uh, look at, uh, you know, you get sports stadiums. And, I mean, right. none of this benefits greater Minnesota. Not a drop of it. Right. And so... I, it's hard to make the case that they're treated fairly. And it's just another example to me. I mean, like I said, if you had a city that had, you know, a paper mill as the main thing and the state came in and regulated how much paper they could make. Right. Um, number one, that city council would be going crazy. The citizens there would be going crazy. Well, why is it any different if they regulate the fishing or over-regulate yeah. it? I, I think it should be regulated to a, to a degree. But when you overregulate it to the point that I catch forty fish and, and throw thirty seven back, right? Guess what? I ain't coming back there. Nope. That just takes all the fun out of it, you know. If you can't keep anything, uh, it's like, oh my god, this is a quarter inch too. Then I got to look around the corner and make sure no RoboCop is trying to, <sighs> you know, <laughs> go after. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I just I think it's a tough deal, Jay. I really do. And um Yeah, um I and I don't know what the answer is. I mean, you have um It's a fair thing. I mean, I I don't, I'm not sure what would solve it either. I think what would solve the first part is sort of putting some putting uh the DNR on I don't want to say the defensive but taking away maybe they're just blanket right to do anything they want. Right. And just sort of saying, no, I want to hear the justification you have for this. Or maybe these these limits need to be for a year or two and then be removed. You know, I mean. But, yeah. But should they have the blanket power to just. I think, and I don't know. I'm just a guy, right? But here, here's what I think. I think... No, you're identifying as a guy. No, I am a guy. I don't identify as anything. <laughs> I know what I am. I know what I was born as. I know that I have X and Y chromosomes down to every cell of my body, so... You biologist, you. Yeah. Um, I think this is a workable solution, where the city's townships that are around a lake have the say over what happens on that lake but working with the dnr to figure out okay what are the estimated fish populations okay what are you know what are the issues with milfoil or zebra mussels or you know how what 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 are the uh, turkey or pheasant populations look like? You know, um, all of that kind of stuff I think really needs to be managed. And I hate to put together like more shared power agreements. And I, I, but maybe that's the way to go where the cities still remain, you know, they maintain their independence, the, the townships, their independence on what happens on their land, but working with the DNR uh, to, See, to determine the scientific end of it so that they can, they can make the, yeah, like the the, in, other, in other words, like the DNR, 
gives them scientific information. Yes. But doesn't have the authority to just come in and blanketly say, no. Yeah. You can't catch sunfish on this lake. Absolutely. <laughs> or you can only keep three. I, mean, I, just, I just wonder, you know, like I said before, I mean, and who says their methodology? Yeah. Does anybody put that under a microscope at all? And question, of course, I, I'm not... Remember, I'm not a, do- a scientist, so I, right. I'm not allowed to question anybody. I mean, so it's, <laughs> you know, it's just, I just, like I said, I just feel for these communities, and I just, I hope that at some point we get a governor who's going to, um, you know, dictate right. to him. And I, I do think, uh, you know, the governor's supposed to have the control over the executive branch, uh, not have the executive branch dictate, and... To me, I think we have a lot of pencil pushing going on. Oh, absolutely we do. You know, um, There are 81 major watersheds covering the state and about 5,600 minor watersheds. And I know that the DNR has something to do with those, uh, but at the same time, there are independent organizations that work within, you know, counties or, or groups, cities in shared power agreements that seem to be able to manage yeah, some of what water, goes on yeah. in those watersheds. But that's the thing. Uh, if I, they can manage that, why can't they manage you know, some of their own fishing stuff? Right. They can manage the wastewater, the sewer water. The, the state DNR doesn't come in and tell them what to do there. Right. You know, I don't know. I just think it's it's gone too far. I think I think it's just gone too far, and uh, I I favor regulations to a degree. I favor standards to a degree. Um, I don't want fish being endangered. I don't want anything like that. But I I think you know the idea that that a government agency can write laws, different laws for different lakes, can enforce them, can take away my license that I paid for. Um, that's yeah. where I just feel like it goes too far. I think as well uh, that they should be able to issue emergency hunting permits and, and fishing licenses for people that, okay, uh, they're on hard times. They need to gather food. Hmm. Here, Here's an emergency permit, an emergency uh, license. So you should do that with the homeless. Yeah, Bring them here, up there and have, teach them to make get their own food. I don't know. Yeah, why not? Teach a man to fish. And, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. It's the whole thing. If you teach them to do it rather than do it for them, right? Maybe you've got a you know somebody's attitude starts changing. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason you know you couldn't issue some sort of emergency permit. There's enough lakes in the cities where, you know, homeless people could go to Lake of the Isles, like Badama uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Can you, can you keep anything in Minneapolis? Uh, right. Like, I, I, if it has three eyes, you throw it back. Yeah. I think that's the rule. Um, well, Lake Minnetonka, how many yeah. city medicine And that's lake? a little bit of a, a drive, but some homeless people live out of their vehicles and they live in the suburbs and they, they could get to Minnetonka. They could get to Twin Lakes. They could get to Crystal Lake. They could get to some of these places. And I mean, Medicine there are Lake, a Fish ton Lake, of Lake. lakes. Yeah, they're everywhere. And, and, you know, until somebody can get on their feet and you, you give it, you know, this is good for 30 days and here's what you're allowed to catch, you know, or something like that. Because I think as well, I mean, if we return to that mentality a little bit where people were allowed to to make their own way and everything wasn't regulated by government. I mean, you're still kind of regulating it, I guess, with an emergency permit or license like that, but, but you're still giving people the opportunity to go do something for themselves and lift themselves up out of a situation. Yeah, and maybe at some point you can regulate out the regulations. People yeah. just do it. They don't wait for government to give them the green light. I don't right. Know. I don't know. It's interesting. Well, Jay, I'll tell you what's more interesting. Me. Oh. Oh, jeez. I don't know about that, but it is your time of the day. Styling, profiling, jet flying, limousine riding, wheel and deal and son of a gun, the Roddy of Piper, the arm of armpit. What? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I just I'd rather be up. the arm than the armpit, I guess. 
The pit of the armpit. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, sign off sermon. SOS. Jay, take it away. Thank you, Andrew. You know, it's true. These government bodies have way too much power. And they're, we've got these unelected bureaucrats that are in control of our education system, our nature. <laughs> uh, you name it, they're in control of it. And transportation and roads and highways and housing. and You know, it's, it gets a little cumbersome when you have these unelected bureaucrats making rules and laws and that you are unable to just freely live. It has gotten so bad that we have to get permission for everything. We have to really go beg the government. Am I allowed to do this? Can I build this size of a garage? Can I build a fence? Can I fish? Can I hunt? Can I drive on the roads? Uh, what roads can I drive on? How fast can I drive on them? It, it, the list goes on and on and on and on. And there are so few activities that we can just do freely anymore without government having some say over how we do it, when we do it, or what we do at all. And it's just not the way that things were intended to be. But here we are. And I think this has some merit. Being able to to fish and to hunt when you need to. Being able to have like emergency licenses or permits where somebody, if they can prove they're on hard times, they're allowed to, to go take animals uh, to eat. I, God gave us the animals to eat. He gave us plants to eat. And, and there's even regulation, you know, over, over that. You know, when you look at, oh, you're not allowed to water your garden on certain days. Or, or you know, we have to learn to become more self-sufficient because we are completely sufficient on government. We are completely sufficient on grocery stores. We are completely sufficient on gas stations. We are completely you know, granted, they're trying to take care of the gas station thing, but then nobody's going to be driving anywhere because solar is going to, you know, keep <laughs> giving us blackouts and brownouts every week. Um, but the, that's the thing, though. We need to become more self-sufficient. We need to grow gardens. We need to hunt. We need to fish. We need to to learn to, to build things with our own hands. We need to learn to take care of ourselves and take care of our families. And yeah, it's more time consuming. It sure is. You know, uh, it's a lot more convenient to go to the store and buy something. It's a lot more convenient to, uh, you know, do exactly what these things say you know but we've got to we've got to push back sometimes because it, it it's not in our best interest what happens if we're dependent upon the grocery store for all of our groceries and all of a sudden we have blackouts we have brownouts we have blizzards we have bad weather whatever people run to the grocery store they buy up all the water they buy up all the uh, the meat, whatever. I mean, you've gone to the grocery store lately and you've seen it. All the bare shelves, the big empty spots where things used to be. You know, how the supply chain isn't able to keep up and keep things stocked so that you have that thing, that, that roll of toilet paper to buy when you get there. But because we're sufficient only when when we've gone to to go to the government when we've gone to go to the store um, we suffer and we'll suffer a whole lot more especially if there's a big economic event especially if there's a big weather event especially if there are riots and fires and things like that again you mark my words it's going to be more difficult so what do we do well we got to get good at hunting and fishing and growing food and maybe having chickens so we can have eggs, learning how to fix stuff around the house, learning how to, you know, 
really take care of ourselves, how to become a good shot, all that kind of stuff. It's important, and so we got to do it. And we can't wait till things get bad because if we wait till things get bad, it's it's already too late. We're behind the eight ball. No, instead, we have to put our foot forward. We have to take a step. And we got to spend the extra time if that's what it takes. So well, how do we do it? What do we do? Well, there's a lot... Lots of things, and I mentioned some of those. The other things we can do is make sure that we get people in the government that are going to stand, that are going to push back where they can, people who are going to look out for our best interests, not for their own best interests. And that starts with you. It starts with you deciding, you know what, I'm sick and tired of this. I'm going to do something about it. So you do it. And I just ask that... uh that you think long and hard about it. Maybe commit it to prayer. Do what you need to do in order to come to the realization, why am I as I created? Why am I here? What is the meaning of life? What is my destiny? And you step into it, you walk in it, and you change the world. Because that's the way it works. Some of you might be called to government. Some of you might be called to business. Some of you might be called to education. Some of you might be called into the media. Some of you might be called into arts and entertainment. Some of you might be called into the church to serve as leaders there. Some as leaders in families. I, there are so many places for us to get plugged in and do something great. So I challenge you to find out what that is. I challenge you to take those first steps to start putting things in place. You can do this. You need help? Get a hold of us. C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. That's C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. And we will be there to help you. And and we can change the state. It's just going to take a little bit of exerted effort for for a while. And we can start to turn things back the way that they should be. All right. We love you, Minnesota. Now it's your turn to get to work. Get too caught up.